the 21st Super Bowl. This was the scene 18 hours ago at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. 101,000 were there, paying up to $1,500 for a ticket to see America's sporting occasion of the year. 120 million more were watching on television. The New York Giants and the Denver Broncos prepared for battle in Super Bowl 21. The Giants, the NFC champions, had cultivated such an intimidating aura that the East Coast contingent were confidently predicting a mismatch. Coach Bill Parcells knew that the Big Apple, with no championship for 31 years, this time expected the spoils. Denver hadn't won a Super Bowl either, but Dan Reeves' men weren't believers in the New York legend. If his team suffered in comparison with their opponents individually, it was convinced that for all the hype, the wild men of New York could be tamed. It's the Giants in blue to kick off. Your commentators, the Miami Dolphins coach, Don Shula, our own John Smith, and first, Frank Gifford. Allegre is okay, about to get it underway. And it carries to the three-yard line, and it'll be brought out by Gene Lang. Good opening over the right side, but Lang unable to get through. So it'll be Broncos football out of the 23-yard line, hit there by Byron Hunt. John Elway, the quarterback, will move on to the football field, the leader in every way for this team. He missed just his fourth year. And John Elway's big play in the postseason game against the Cleveland Browns, as you looked at the defensive unit for the New York Giants. Great linebacking. And now their secondary. His 98-yard drive against Elway. the Cleveland Browns, a special thing that kept them in that game and ultimately led to a victory. On first play, Elway wants to go up. He will run it. And Elway saw he could not carry it to a first down, stepped out of bounds, but hit as he did so. It was a great example of Lawrence Taylor, number 56, putting the heat on Elway. Elway was conscious of the pressure coming, ducked inside. Carson chased him out of bounds. As we look at the offensive unit now, the Denver Broncos. Good offensive line, Keith Bishop on his way to a Pro Bowl. Danny Reeves. Good all-around running back, as I mentioned earlier, with the Dallas Cowboys during his career. Came here six years ago. There's a lot of trick plays offensively. They move the football around just as they do defensively. Denver on first and ten. Tommy Winder. And Winder hit at the line of scrimmage. Squirts up there for about a yard and a half. The giant defense, they swarm the ball. You're always going to see two and three and four of the blue jerseys around the football. This is what makes him so tough. And you'll see a lot of this man, number 56, Lawrence Taylor. He was there on the tackle. Actually, Don, wouldn't you say Lawrence Taylor is just about as effective when you try to run away with him? Right, because he's going to chase you down from behind. So a theory is to run at him. They feel they're better off. Second down. That way looks it over. Motion and the toss goes out to number 47, Gerald Wilhite, and he's upended. Good play by Carl Banks coming up from the outside position. Made the trip right at the line of scrimmage, and Wilhite sprawls forward for about a yard, maybe a yard and a half in. Banks has been playing great football, Don. Here he is getting rid of the blocker, knowing where the ball is, gets penetration, and gets the tackle. That's a classic tackle. Banks came up three years ago as number one draft pick, and it was just this year that he has developed into one of the fine linebackers in the game today. Third down to seven. That will put John Elway into a passing position. The Giants bring in another linebacker, another defensive back. Out comes the Jim Bertha nose tackle. So they are lying for the pass from Denver. Strong arm by Elway, and he has one of the 
strongest arms in this game. He finds Mark Jackson deep downfield. But the key to that Bronco first down in giant territory was a good pass protection. This gave Elway time to throw, and he looks at his favorite target, number 80, Mark Jackson, who gets open. He made the big plays in the game that got him into this game. Elvis Patterson on the coverage. So, John, Denver, they have it on the move. They do. The quarterback usually drops back and goes three yards or five yards or seven yards, but that time Elway took it from the shotgun. First and 10 at the Giants, 39-yard line. Elway back again. Again, he has protection. And he uses all of it, fires over the middle to the 35-yard line, complete to Sammy Winder, out of the backfield, a gain of about four. Broncos like to use their backs out of the backfield, and Winder wouldn't be the one you would expect to see out of there, would you, Don? They were looking for the giant zone defense to drop deep and then just drop it under the uh, coverage to Winder. And uh, it might have been a screen pass. I didn't see any linemen downfield. Second down at about four. There you can see the zone that Don was describing a moment ago. Elway couldn't go deep, so he dumped it off to Winder. Short pickup. Okay, again, in motion. And off the wind over the right side. And nailed there at the line of scrimmage, but he, the surge carries him for about a yard. It will be third down and about three for Denver. And one would suspect putting John Elway back into a passing position. Broncos send their offensive plays in from the sidelines. And the Giants often do that, but they often signal them in from the sidelines. Third down and two. What do you think, Coach? Uh, it's going to be interesting here to see if they are in the shotgun formation. Elway is going up under center. They've got their short yardage offense in there with the two tight ends. And a single sec back, that would be Winder. And they're going to run for it. Hit behind the line of scrimmage. Sammy Winder nailed. Hit there first by Leonard Marshall, I believe. Lawrence Taylor was also there. George Martin, they closed it down. And rather than picking up the first down, there will be a loss of yardage. John Elway, who got the Broncos into giant territory, disappointed as Winder is hit first by number 55, Reasons, and then Banks was there. They were all there, and out comes the field goal unit. It'll be Rich Carlos. His best kick of the season was 51 yards. He was 20 of 28 for the regular season. And keep in mind that he kicks in Mile High Stadium in Denver. And the holder is Kubiak, the backup quarterback for the Denver Broncos. On its way, it's got the height, it's got the distance, and it's got the three points. It's good. He's on a roll. He's hit uh, five in a row now. But the longest one he had in the playoffs was 33. In one drive, the Broncos had equaled the combined total of the Giants' two opponents in the playoffs. We pick it up with New York in their first drive on the Broncos' 41. Ten fires a shot, is complete. Downfield to Stacy Robinson, and Robinson gets the Giants' first down inside the 25, close to the 23-yard line. Stacy Robinson, one of those young Giant receivers, a second-year youngster out of North Dakota State. So down and out pattern, straight down the field, fakes to the inside, one-on-one -on -one coverage, a great throw by Sims. Steve Wilson knocks him out of bounds. First down. Robinson has a lot of speed. Wilson does not have a lot of speed, so Wilson was laying way off, and Sims was right on target. Giants keep it alive with the first down now at the 23-yard line. Sims now is successful on four of his four attempts. Morris, right side once again. Nothing happening outside. He tries to turn back inside. And the one Morris, thing this defense of the Broncos does so well is that they pursue well done. They're all over the ball. And that's the first time that they've stopped the Giants when they've tried to run with the football. And this is important because in the previous two attempts, we saw that... Uh, that Morris was successful. Here's Carl Mecklenburg getting over and making the play. This is what makes him so effective. He was following the play right along the line of scrimmage. Joe Morris was trying to take it outside, turned right back into Mecklenburg. Mecklenburg's a very intelligent player. He memorized over 100 defensive combinations for this team. Studied in medical school at the University of Minnesota before making it in pro football. It's second down and 10 for the Giants. Sims to Navarro, and it's complete inside the 10-yard line. A play the Giants have used successfully all season long, but over the last four or five games they played, it has been their big bread and butter play when they get down in close. This is a case of a big man against a smaller man. The tight end, Mark Bavaro, 
getting his body in front of the defensive back Steve Foley and making the target for the quarterback Sims to throw the football 17 yard game and Bavaro gets the Giants first down at the six yard line so now with the first down here you have a first down and goal to go because obviously you cannot make 10 yards for a first down this is kind of a tightened up offensive unit you see when the American football teams get in close Sims looks into the corner of the end zone and wide open is Zeke Moat. And so the Giants, with no penalty flags down, will take the lead. Sims, who looked like he was going to be in trouble with the pass rush, stepped just inside. Moat kept it alive. He is the tight end who was replaced a year ago by Mark Bavaro when he suffered a very severely injured knee. And Moat gets the touchdown after Bavaro had set it up. He comes across in motion and then breaks all the way back across the defense. This takes a lot of time. The protection had to be good. Sims had the time. Mohart got open for the touchdown. Allegre for the conversion. And the Giants have taken a 7-3 lead. Very impressive drive by Sims. He was 6 for 6 for 69 yards. And he's really come of age in these playoffs. I think it, it happened on December 1st when he uh, had a great game against the 49ers. And He's been a much maligned quarterback, but he's having a great day today. And as you can see, he's tough. He'll stay in there to the last possible moment before he delivers it in. And these two teams, of course, met earlier in the season, the seventh game of the season, and the Giants just did edge them out in that game, 19 to 16. And in that game, they were unable to score a touchdown against the Denver Bronco defense. And they rectified that here in the first quarter with five minutes and 27 seconds remaining. Allegre hits for the kickoff. And from the 15-yard line, it'll be Ken Bell of the Broncos to bring it out. And Bell pops an opening over the left side. Good return out over the 40-yard line, near the 43-yard line before Bell is tripped up by Tom Flynn. Bill Sims talking to coaches who hover high in the press box, looking down on the defense. They have a much better angle to send their plays down to the sidelines. And let's take a look now at Moat in motion. As he this sets is up their goal line offense. And the tight end, Moat, goes in motion. It's play action. They're going to fake a run to the other side. They want to try to get the defensive man that's covering the motion man out of position. They come back with play action here. You can see him cutting back. The defensive man has no chance. Sims has time to get the touchdown. Back to live action. The Broncos first down and 10. The ball near their own 43-yard line. Elway with play action now. Nothing doing down deep field, so he... Throws underneath the winder, and winder will have a Bronco first down, and he's in Giants territory. Well, play action, we keep talking about, but play action is a, a fake run. It's a term that we use a lot, but we, we need to explain these terms for you. And the reason you use it is to hold linebackers and get a pass receiver back there without the coverage. You saw number 53 dropping back, and when Elway couldn't go deep, he had to throw underneath and winder. Takes the ball and with the little checkoff pass and gets the first down for Denver. 44 yard line of the Giants. They'll way back once again. And the man opens the big tight end. Mobley, rookie out of Salem State, who filled in so well when Clarence K was suspended for part of this season. Let's take a look at him again. These last two plays uh, show a lot about. Uh, Elway in the confidence that he now has on the last play instead of going deep he dumped it off for a big gainer here he calmly looks over the field hits the big tight end in between the seams of their zone defense Orson Mobley a young tight end that's a big target that gets the first down and the Giants defensive staff must be a little concerned you should not give John Elway the time that he is getting to throw the football they have not been able to pressure him thus far on first down Elway is back again Again, as the time to sign us a screen, sucking the defense in. The ball is dropped over the defense's outstretched hands, and Sammy Winder takes it up close to another first down for the Broncos. So Alway is now five for five in passing. So uh, both quarterbacks having good days to start off this Super Bowl. Flag is down, and the discussion now by Jerry Mark Wright and his assistants on the field. The officials are also graded throughout the course of the season and the officials who grade out best in their coverage of the game are the ones that officiate here in the Super Bowl. 
Well, we got the class of the field on. That's the way it should be, Frank. A, a reward for the officials, the same way this game is a reward the for the players. The Giants, their fouls will be enforced. Personal foul, way hit out of bounds. Defense, unsportsmanlike conduct foul, number 56, for throwing the marker after the foul. First down, goal to go, the Broncos. Trading the Giants, 7-3. to three. Have a first down, goal to go at the six-yard line of the Giants. Steve Sewell is in, number 30 for the Broncos. This is Sewell. Looked inside where the play was designed to go. The Giants have closed it off, tried to break it to the outside. Good reaction out there by Elvis Patterson. He comes up from the cornerback spot and makes the tackle, and there's a loss of about three yards on the play. It's usually a disaster when a runner bounces outside. The hole was supposed to be inside. There wasn't anything there. He tried to go outside. The giant defense has got such great athletes. They pursue so well, it turns into a big loss. Elway, of course, if you have followed American football this past season, you know that he is a scrambling type of quarterback, a good athlete. He'll run around by time until his receivers can get old, open. He is obviously in passing, in passing situation at the moment. Looks over the middle on second down. It fires a complete as Vance Johnson, who gets back to the original line of scrimmage, Gary Reasons, is there to make the tackle for the Giants. And on the sidelines is Gary Kubiak, who signals the plays in. Off, often stands by Danny Reeves when they do not want to substitute, and they will signal their plays in. They were in the shotgun formation on the last play with Elway back. He's going to be back in the shotgun again. This is going to be a direct snap from the center. And he's going to have more time to look over the field and have, give the receivers a chance to get open. Third down, goal to go. Elway on a draw play right up the middle is wide open. Good call, and you can do that when you have an athletic quarterback. You wouldn't want to do that with Dan Marino, would you, Don? But you can <laughs> we do don't, it with Elway. We don't do that with Marino. That was a great call by the coach of the Denver Broncos, Dan Reeves. Uh, they were all spread out. Elway saw the opening up the middle. He dove in, showed his great athletic ability as he scored the touchdown that puts Denver ahead. I think it was a direct call, though, wasn't it? It was a quarterback draw. No question about it. He's looking all the way. You can see here, as the play develops, he's looking down for oh. the linemen are all pushing their men to the outside. Taylor almost got back. He could not do so. And now Rich Carlos puts it through the uprights, and the Broncos retake the lead. They go out in front of the Giants, 10 to 7, and maybe it's the kind of Super Bowl we've been looking forward to a, for a long time. Usually these are not great football games. This one has the makings of one. So the world's greatest defense have conceded 10 points in the first quarter. Not long after the start of the second quarter, Elway was outwitting the Giants again, finding wide receiver Vance Johnson with his 55-yard pass. And with seven minutes to go in the half, Rich Carlis stepped up for this 23-yard field goal attempt. A big let-off for the Giants. Dan Reeves plays it poker face, but it's a psychological blow to the Broncos. And shortly afterwards, there was further embarrassment. Three men and Lawrence Taylor ready to go. Four-man rush. And they come, and Elway is going to be tackled in the end zone. That'll be two points for the Giants. George Martin was there. Also, Lawrence Taylor was there. And when you're tackled in your own end zone, that's a safety. Elway had no place to scamper out. He's very good at it. But the Giants came upfield. There were three of them there. No place for Elway to go. It will be Martin, I believe, who will get the safety. He was the one that scored a 78-yard touchdown interception against Denver in their meeting earlier this year in which the Giants won 1916. Martin just takes the offensive tackle and drives him back. Ken Lanier. Elway moves out to that side, hurting Lanier's block. Martin is there to make the tackle, which is in the end zone. It's a safety two points. Now close can we get? That makes the Broncos lead by one now, 10 to 9 over the Giants. The Broncos' offense, though, was still making plenty of yardage, and with 20 seconds of the half left, they set up Carlis again, this time from 34 yards. Carlis was in the middle of a nightmare. Parcells looked smug, but underneath that, he can't have believed his luck. But at halftime, the Broncos lead 10 to 9. 
Now we move into the second half and pick up the Giants' first drive on their own 44. Third down and a long three for the Giants. They stay on the ground, they go with Joe Morris. And Morris will be held short of the first down, hit first by Louis Wright, who may be losing a little bit in speed on the pass coverage now in his 12th year, but he still can hit with the best of those cornerbacks. Outstanding defense, they turned it to the inside, Louis Wright turned it to the inside. The great pursuit coming from the inside out. There's number 20, Louis Wright turning it. And here comes the pursuit. Puts him into a situation. They're going to measure for the first down, but I don't think they made it. Wright had him, and Dennis Smith came up and popped him and held him short of the first down by almost a yard. And the Giants down 10 to 9. They're close to midfield. I would not suspect at this point they would even think about doing anything with the punting game, although in the past they have had their own gadget plays off their punting game and their field goal game. In any event, they bring out Sean Landetta, the punter. Gerald Wilhite will drop to the Denver Broncos. And when you have a great punter like Landetta, I don't think you want to fool around early in a football game. But if you're going to fool around, this is the time to do it because they've got halfway decent field position with only about a half yard to go for the first down. And they play good defense. They might try the long count, something to draw them offside. Jeff Rutledge is the up man, and now they move into a different formation. They could do just about anything they want off this. It's a quarterback now under center. They could be trying to draw them off for the five-yard penalty, too. Landetta's a good punter. They may just wait this out and take a five-yard penalty. Trying to draw the Broncos offside. They're down to two seconds. Redledge tries the quarterback sneak, and I don't know whether he got it or not. Strange play. The offense is running back. They think that they got it. Offense comes back out onto the field. Let's take a look at it again. They were trying to stretch it as long as they could, hoping the jittery defense would jump off sides and they'd get the first down automatically with the offside. The center, Bart Oates, is the key on this. He has to fire out and get movement on the nose tackle. The quarterback's in behind him on the quarterback sneak. You they heard get the roar. The first down. That is what you call a gutty call. That <laughs> takes a great deal of courage for a coach to do that in this situation. You gotta admire Bill Parcells when it works. When it works. It's also time when it doesn't work. Well, the offensive coordinator, Ron Earhart, was at the Patriots, and he was very conservative then. That's an amazing play for him. They have not be been conservative, with. though, throughout the season on their kicking game. They, of course, rely greatly on that defense. First down and 10, and Sims is back. Sims, Morris, and uh, Sims, who started to run after he could not find a deep receiver, pulled up and hits Morris, and he's up close to another first down, and indeed he gets it. Well, the little man starting to impact on this game. Mecklenburg will again pressure on Phil Sims. Mecklenburg all over the football field, as he has been for the Broncos for the past two years. First down, Giants. The ball in the 40-yard line of the Denver Broncos. Play action by the Giants. Sims has a receiver wide open, and he goes to Roussan out of the backfield. Roussan inside the 20-yard line, and Sims is right on target. 22-yard pickup. The fake of the draw holds the linebacker, and this is going to give the receiver time to get down the field. Number 22, Lee Roussan, comes out of the backfield. The linebackers are held by the fake of the draw. As you can see, the quarterback going back, fakes the draw, holds the linebackers, gets the completion to the halfback. Sims is now 15 of 18, 141 yards, one touchdown. He has no interceptions. He's getting time to throw the football. He has a good arm. Morris. Uh, there would be a lot of backs who would have taken that back inside. Following the block of Carthen, Morris kept it to the outside and got a tough three yards out of it. Dennis Smith, the strong safety, comes flying across the line. Here comes number 44. A good block that enables Morris to come free on the outside. Maurice Carthen on the block. Inside the 15-yard line, second down and seven. Once again, 
Broncos on the blitz. Sims cannot find a deep man. Checks it off to Carthen, and Carthen taken out of bounds near the 13-yard line. He'll get only a yard, a yard and a half on that as Louis Wright came up quickly from the defensive cornerback. Third down and six. Shotgun to the Giants. Sims again. Steps back into the pocket and he fires to Bavaro. Touchdown, Giants. And that is the kind of drive the Giants have been generating throughout the second half of the season. Run Morris a little bit. You take it off to a back. You hit Roussan out of the backfield. You hit Morris on a short one. Then you find Bavaro with a big one. And that's exactly what they did on that drive. This makes the fourth down gamble all the more meaningful right now when you capitalize on it by scoring the touchdown. But the, the here's the tight end now, number 89. Good protection by the line. He gets free, the big target again. Sims puts it on the money. Turn Dennis Smith, the strong safety for the Broncos, completely around, was able to break it clear. Sims was right on the target. Flags are flying. The Broncos appear to be offsides, and we'll set up. And go at it once again. Lawrence Taylor coming off sides for the Giants. Or to meet a Denver Bronco would come off sides. Raul Allegre for the conversion. The Giants having taken the lead. Allegre for the one-point conversion. And Danny Reeves and Denver Broncos have fallen behind 16 to 10. A little more than five minutes remaining in the third quarter. Here's the replay of the touchdown. A lot of time to throw. Gives their big tight end, Mark Barbaro, time to get open against Dennis Smith. The Broncos were held in their first drive of the second half and were forced to punt. The Giants moved downfield again. And with just under four minutes to go in the third quarter, they set out Raul Allegri for this 26-yard field goal attempt. The Giants stretched their lead to nine. As we pick it up, it's Denver's ball on their own 20, first and 10. That's what Elway does well. Gets away from Taylor, fires downfield incomplete. That was Carl Banks on the blitz. That had to be a mistake there. Nobody blocked the outside linebacker as he blitzed, and there, there's always somebody that has to be assigned to him. It was either the tackle that had to sh shift out or the guard stepping back and picking up number 58 Carl Banks but he came through without uh, anybody blocking him just to explain what a blitz is it's when a, an extra defensive lineman comes through to put pressure on the quarterback usually five to put a rush on that quarterback to flush him out of the pocket or make him throw the ball quicker or erratically usually a linebacker and you usually try to rush more men than they have men to block and second down and Elway's in the shotgun second and ten the Giants bring their linebackers once again forcing Elway to go with the screen, which he had called. I thought he was trying to dump it off, but that was a set play. That was a screen, a good time to have it called. And you get the pass pressure, and those are the plays being signaled in to John Elway. And you get the pass pressure, and you have a screen on, you have an opportunity to pick up good yardage and sometimes even break it all the way. Third down and two now. Denver's that type of football team. They have been a comeback football team all season long. Shotgun again on third down and two. Elway appears to be audibleizing, changing the play that he had called in the huddle. This time a lot of time, tried to whip it out into the flat. Good coverage there by Carl Banks against Orson Mobley. Fourth down. We'll look at it again. They're trying to get the interference call here. You can see number 89, Mobley. Banks has got him all the way. Mobley feels, hey, I think it's a good play by the defensive man. He makes an effort to get to the football, and when They're you not, do that, you're not going to get called for pass interference. Not a bad play by the official also. To Carl Banks, he's, uh, a lot of people think he's as good a quarterback as Lawrence Taylor. He's great against the run as well as the pass. Good receiver will often use those officials out there. Mike Horan on to punt for the Broncos. With the left footed kicker. Tags this one pretty well. And McConkey has to settle for the fair catch out of the 32 yard line. 
So the Giants, who have things going pretty much their way, they lead 19 to 10 with 2.38 remaining here in the third quarter, bring out their offensive unit. As we look at the Super Bowl's largest crowd, it was right here at the Rose Bowl. They did not get what they anticipated today. But there are a lot of folks, and they are from all around the world. Indeed, as we showed you at the very beginning of the game, there were some from Great Britain as well. First down and 10, the Giants from their own 32-yard line. This is Joe Morris over the right side, Joe and Morris. Morris hit right at the line of scrimmage. Might have squeaked a little out of that. Ricky Hunley was there defensively for the Broncos. Ricky Hunley is a good story. He, last year, he led this, the team in uh, special teams tackles, and this year, he led the team on defense in tackles. A very ferocious tackler. That's a play that the Giants count on. When nothing else works, that play works. And Joe Morris has had a lot of yards on it. Denver stopped at that time. Second down and eight. And the Broncos bring a linebacker. Phil Sims reads it. Goes to Manuel. And a good read by Phil Sims. Knew he'd have the single coverage, which you usually get when you bring the linebacker. And he was right there. Here it is right here. The pass rush. And they're able to get the ball off in the area that the linebacker vacates when he tries to put pressure on the quarterback. Sam's second touchdown, two touchdown passes. Elway, 212 total yards. You know, Elway had 386 yards in the first Giants game, and he did not throw a touchdown pass in that game. First down and 10, right at midfield for the Giants. They're just inside Bronco territory. Morris again. He's on his feet, works his way down to about the 46-yard line of the Broncos. It's blocked by Chris Godfrey out in front of Morris. That same misdirection play, it starts out like a slant to the left, and then Joe Morris spins back around. Chris Godfrey pulls and gets in front. Warm day. Natural turf here. Football players playing like they should, really, on grass, getting a little dirty, sweating it up a little bit. A lot of tension, so much at stake. $36,000 to the winner. To the winning player, each winning player, $18,000 to the losing player. Free flicker play. Morris back to Sims. Has a man open, doesn't see him in time, and goes back to McConkie underneath. McConkie hit, tries to hurdle into the end zone and gets to the two yard line. Mark Haynes hit McConkie, and Sims had a man open for the touchdown, but he was reading McConkie all the way. That's what we call a flea flicker here in the United States. I don't know how it got its name. Don Tula is very familiar with it, however. You have to pick the right time for a play like this. It's handed off. It looks like a running play. The back then laterals back. The defensive backfield has a tendency to relax. The giant receiver gets in behind him. Phil McConkie. You get the play, big play when it's least expected. Another great call by the giant coaching staff. And aren't they glad they got McConkie back from Green Bay? They had cut him earlier in the year, had to trade him to get him back, and now they have a first down goal to go. Morris, a sprint into the end zone. And the Giants have it in the right gear offensively. Everything now that the attempt seems to be working. Always a good idea to give it to Joe Morris. Chris Godfrey pulls out and puts a great block on the safety man from Denver as he comes up. Parcells is happy. Great drive by the Giants. And Bill Parcells, and he looks like he hasn't been missing a lot of meals, Don. <laughs> no, his, his nickname in New England when he was an assistant coach of the linebackers was Tuna. He was well-liked in New England. They could have called him Pasta, I think. <laughs> hey, he's going to be well-liked in New York if he isn't already. Well, that's great. Good on the conversion of the Giants. The 26 to 10. Let's take a look at it again. I think it was designed to go a little off tackle. Morris reads it all the way to the outside. Godfrey out in front of it, throws the key block, and Morris just walks in. It looks easy. Giants now taking command of this game, certainly offensively. McConkie coming up with a 44-yard completion from Bill Sims, who is having a fine day. Couldn't be much better.
Here in Pasadena, the Giants 16 points in front and only 15 minutes playing time away from their first Super Bowl title. At the start of the fourth quarter, the Broncos were even deeper in the mire when John Elway, from deep in his own end zone, was intercepted by number 34, Elvis Patterson. Once again, the Giants were in control. First down, just inside their own half. Morris, and down goes Morris, hit there by Rulon Jones. Out at the line of scrimmage. Let's take a look at Jones in isolation. Rulon plays the blocker, sees the play, and makes the one-on-one -on -one tackle on Joe Morris. Now, if you're going the other way, Don, what are you thinking as a coach? Now, you're let's don't hurt that, ourselves either, right? You're thinking that we need a drive, we got to score the touchdown, and it's going to put the game out of reach. So you, you want to play good, sound, basic football with the idea of making sure that you come up with points. Sims steps back into the pocket, and wide open is Robinson. Stacey Robinson inside the 20-yard line. And Phil Sims, with a lot of cool, with a lot of composure, with Broncos all around him, stepped back into the pocket and found a wide open Stacy Robinson. Sims made that play because he looked to his right, he kept looking to his right, and then he knows that the receiver is over on the left side. Right there he goes, he sees the receiver open, goes to him, and it's too late for Foley to get over there to make the play on the ball. The Giants have scored on all three possessions this half. Touchdown, field goal, touchdown, and now they're within striking distance again. They mark it just outside the 16-yard line of the Broncos. First down once again. Sims with the hot hand. Morris following Carthen. Breaks one tackle, but then he's hammered by Ricky Hunley. Carthen, the lead blocker on it. Ecklenberg again in on the play defensively. Ecklenberg does a good job of seeing the play, beating the blocker, and making the tackle. The Giants are trying to establish the run, to run some time off the clock, and put the uh, points on the board. Sims is 21 of 24, 261 yards, a couple of touchdowns, and if perhaps they were not looking to work on the clock, and we still might see it, this is where they love to go to their tight end, Bavaro. Sims back, looks to the outside. The pass intended for Bavaro, well covered by Louis Wright. No question, the interference on this. No uh, question. Louis Wright lets Bavaro get in there behind him, and then he bumps into the receiver without looking to play the ball, and that's, the flag is down, it's interference all the way. One yard line. And of course, when you get that pass interference in the end zone, they bring the ball to the one yard line, so it's almost as good as a completion. You can see how bad Louis Wright is beat. Or was he? He makes no effort to see the ball. He just, that's, <laughs> that is pass interference. There's no, you don't have to replay that one, Frank. Now that is pass interference. <laughs> the receiver has to be given the opportunity to catch that ball, and he wasn't in that one. He wasn't given the opportunity to survive. <laughs> First down, goal to go, one yard line. Morris fights and scrambles back to the line of scrimmage. Louis Wright and Ricky Hunley there defensively for Denver. Ricky Hunley played his collegiate football in nearby Arizona. Was drafted by the Cincinnati Bengals four years ago. Refused to report. Didn't want to play there as we look at the offensive yardage and John Smith alluded to that a few moments ago. Totally dominant here in the second half of the Giants. Ricky Hundley would not play for Cincinnati. They traded him for a couple of first-round draft picks to the Broncos. He became a starter last year, and he is very definitely one of the five defensive linebackers in the league today. And this is de very definitely one of the big hearts in this game. Joe Morris, smallish running back. Stim's in trouble, and he's sacked. Back at the eight-yard line, Freddie Gilbert, first-year man out of Georgia. Number 90 was there defensively for Denver. Well, that was an unusual play because 70% of the time inside the 10 this year, the Giants have run the ball, and Joe Morris has been usually the Third. person that runs it. God, I think they'd like to call back. I think that they wish that they would have run with that football as opposed to trying the play-action type of pass to try to catch Denver off guard. Denver 
was a wake for it and it backfired on the Giants. It was a very, very costly error on the part of the Giants. And they bring up third down now. Third down and goal to go. Looking at the action that caused a little rhubarb that we watched a moment ago. A couple of players getting into it. Bart Oates in there tangled up with one of the Broncos. Meanwhile, back to live action. Third down, goal to go, and Phil Sims will come from the shotgun. Broncos bring the full blitz. Sims reads it, fires into the end zone. And coming down with the ball is McConkey, who's having himself a great Super Bowl. That's when things go right. I think the ball was away from for Navarro. Navarro. It came off of his hands. McConkey was there. The rule was changed four or five years ago where two offensive receivers could touch the football and it's ruled a completed pass. Bill McConkey, the former helicopter pilot in the Navy who was with the Giants a couple of years. I mentioned it earlier. They cut him earlier in the season. They brought him back when a couple of their receivers were injured. He has been their chief return man. He's been a clutch man on receptions and he has been a real spirit of this football team. Offside flag goes down. Allegre puts it through the uprights. But the flag is down. Bill Sims, the reaction right after he had fired that strike. Well, I guess this is prior to it. I think he was upset because the tight end dropped it. And now the trail receiver, Makaki, comes up with the ball in the end zone. That's when things are going well for you. Why does it always seem that way? Or it doesn't seem that way. It, seems, it just happens that way, doesn't it? It goes right in, in, in a game sort of like this. There's so many things that determine momentum, and the Giants have got it. Here's the reaction of uh, Bill Parcells. Nothing to it. That's the way we drew it on the board. <laughs> With that extra point, the Giants have scored 26 unanswered points. This time, the Broncos move the ball steadily downfield, but on a fourth and six, Dan Reeves, against the wishes of many Denver supporters, decided against going for the six points and opted instead for a 29-yard field goal. Carlos had at last refound his form, but too late. Now, with just over five minutes left, the Giants have it on the Denver 25. Second down and seven Giants. Martin. And the Giants is done. Mention, keep it on the ground, keep the clock moving. They get it inside the 25 yard line, a gain of about three. It'll be third down and five. And if the score continues, this will be the second Super Bowl that the Broncos have lost. They, of course, lost to Dallas after the 77 season, 20 to 10. Totally dominated in that game. They were coached by Red Miller back then. Tom Landry, of course. Coaching the Dallas Cowboys, and there's Jim Burt, the big nose tackle. That arms like Popeye. In fact, and Jim Burt started that uh, Gatorade uh, uh, ritual. He started it, and Harry Carson has perfected it. Roll out by Sims, and he's all alone. Bill Sims trying to get into the end zone. He gets to the two yard line. Great call. That's what you do in the final quarter of the last game of the season with your quarterback. Well, Phil Sims has had such a great day, and I'm sure that they knew that that call had a great chance to succeed. Watch the pursuit on the part of the defensive linemen of the Denver Broncos. They've been doing this. Sims knows that if he fakes the ball to Joe Morris, they're going to be going in that direction. He keeps it cleverly. Got a lot of running room. He's not going to do anything foolish. If there's a gang around him, he'll go down and not risk the chance of getting hurt. Meanwhile, on the left, you see the defensive cornerback, Mark Haynes of the Broncos. He's in a man-for-man -man pass protection situation. He never looked up and never saw Sims coming. First down, goal to go. And it continues to go well for the Giants in every department. Otis Anderson, who has played very little this season, having come to the Giants early in the year from the St. Louis Cardinals, takes it in for the Giants. And it's a typical Super Bowl. Played well for about a half, and then the winning team, when they seem to take over, two things happen in my estimation, Don. They get so emotionally charged up that they play maybe better than they can. The other team sees the end of the line for them from a long season, and they play maybe a little less than they can. Psychological as much as anything, but that's what it appears to have happened again today. 
it's just hard to figure that the Denver offense would be so unproductive in the second half. Well, I agree. Misses the conversion. The Giants were beginning to plan their celebrations, but credit John Elway. Despite the mauling his team had taken, he still kept his head and his confidence. With just over two minutes of the match remaining, he gave us one more example of what a magnificent thrower of the football he is. Elway to Vance Johnson, and just to keep his hand in it, Elway fires a touchdown shot to the speedy Vance Johnson, the second-year man out of Arizona. Talked about him earlier, injured in the very first game of the season, had orthoscopic surgery, came back from that, and that's a Denver touchdown of 47 yards. There aren't many quarterbacks that can make this throw. Again, he starts to scramble. He lets the receivers get open, and then he rifles the ball in between the defensive people. Vance Johnson knows that Elway can get it there, makes a great catch, gets into the end zone. This is going to make defensive coaches excited for next year. John Elway, they all came up the same year. What was it, 1982? Your Dan Marino came up the same time. Jim Kelly, the Buffalo came up. Six Ken quarterbacks, right. And if it hadn't been for Elway deciding not to play with Baltimore, which is now Indianapolis, you'd have had them all in your division, John. That's right. Uh, Don. And, and of course, uh, Elway was the first player taken. Six quarterbacks taken in the first round. We got Marino as the fifth uh, quarterback taken. And uh, we're very happy with him. And that was the final score of the game. Phil Sims was named the most valuable player, completing 22 of his 25 passes, 88%, a new Super Bowl record. He gets the Gatorade treatment, and even more emphatically later on, so too does his coach. Once all that was over, the celebration started. Irv Cross asked Phil Sims what had made the Giants click so suddenly. Well, today we in the second half, you know, in the first half we moved it every time. We just, I just had a breakdown a couple of times and just missed completing big passes. And, uh, you know, we stayed with the same stuff and we just got it going and we hit a few big plays. And, you know, sometimes you get it going in this league, it's hard to stop it. And that's the way we were today. <laughs> Lawrence, how much did the heat affect your ball game? Well, it affected uh, purely, you know, in the first half, you know, it was so hot and the wife could catch the breath and stuff. Um, and I think the heat of the first half really made it much more difficult for us to play, but guys were getting tired. The second half, uh, when it cooled off, we came out and said, hey, this is our type of weather. Let's go out and play ball. And um, I think it, the, uh, the cool weather in the second half gave us uh, momentum to go in and play well. You know, something unusual going on in this locker room. You're Super Bowl champions, and I don't see any champagne. I don't see any flying around the locker room. When are you going to have the celebration? I just don't understand. Uh, you know, maybe we had to be putting Mets on our you know, uniforms or something like that. But, um, we will have a little party later on tonight and, uh, uh, over at the hotel, so we'll have some champagne, believe me. Congratulations, Dante. Thank you. Thank you. And over the season, Taylor's probably been the Giants' biggest influence. One of the key factors in their success, though, has been that they really are a team. And if they can learn from the problems the Bears had with their superstars this season, then they could be even more dominant next year. In Super Bowl XXI, there was no doubt that they were the ones with the touch. You got the touch! You got the power!
You got the power.